Second trumpet, third part of C became blood. Trumpet, God's judgment on the Roman Empire, first beast. Revelation 8 verse 8, And the second angel sounded, and as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. Revelation 8 verse 9, And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea, and had life, died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. In verse 8, as we take a look in a literal sense, we see an event of a great mountain burning with fire being thrown into the sea, and is probably a volcanic explosion from either an underwater volcano or a volcano near the ocean. The verse continues that a third of the sea became blood. This is in reference to how powerful the explosion will be. It will be forceful enough to launch the mountain into the sea, still on fire. Once it hits, a third of the ocean will become blood. Then, John writes in verse 9. So why a burning mountain? Babylon is here trying to take the place of Sinai. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation, in the sides of the north, Isaiah 14 verses 12 and 13. Satan, as the dragon, gave his authority to the beast of Revelation 13 who here pretends to have the authority to make laws. That came from the true burning mountain. Babylon is suddenly fallen, behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, saith the Lord. And I will stretch out mine hand upon thee, and roll thee down from the rocks, and will make thee a burnt mountain. The sea is come up upon Babylon, she is covered with the multitude of the waves thereof. Jeremiah 51 verses 8 and 25, 41 Bloody Waters And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone, and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down, and shall be found no more at all and the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee, for thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. And in her was found the blood of prophets, and of saints, and of all that were slain upon the earth. Revelation 17 verses 21 to 24 the second trumpet warning points to the sea turning to blood during the second plague. We continue with the activity under the second trumpet, looking at verse 9. And a third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. As a third of the ocean becomes blood, a third of the fish and other living creatures in the water died, and a third of the ships in the ocean were destroyed. This again shows how powerful the explosion will be. It will cause a lack of sea life for food, as well as the interruption of shipping, which equates to trade and financial loss for various nations. This is not the first time that Scripture talks about destruction and plagues with fish. In fact, Moses, in Exodus, chapter 7, verses 20 to 21 lifted up his rod as God commanded him. And in front of Pharaoh and the other servants, all of the river water turned to blood and the fish in the river had died. Now, don't think for one second that if God wanted to toss a fiery volcano into the sea and kill one-third of the fish, and destroy one-third of the ships, he couldn't do it, because he can. But if we look at this passage symbolically, let's see what Scripture has revealed to us previously regarding some of these words and phrases. First, in verse 8, 
a great mountain often refers to a powerful nation, whereas the sea often refers to Gentile nations. The prophet Jeremiah said first chapter 51, verse 25. Behold, I am against you, O destroying mountain, referring to Babylon, who destroys all the earth, says the Lord. And I will stretch out my hand against you, roll you down from the rocks, and make you a burnt mountain. I love what the prophet Daniel says in chapter 2, verse 35 about God's kingdom, he says. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold were crushed together, and became like chaff from the summer threshing floors, the wind carried them away so that no trace of them was found. And the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. You see, when we read scripture, we have to understand the genre of the book, context, context, O, oh, and context. If we were just reading that verse, we would think oh a literal mountain was so big it filled the earth. No, it means God's kingdom filled the earth. The prophet Isaiah also talks about Gentile nations as the sea. He said in chapter 57, verse 20, But the wicked are like the troubled sea, when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. In context, Isaiah was actually talking about being a backslider in a Gentile world and how the Lord will heal and bring him peace. So, as we see nations rising up, one will raise up the beast and his position in the world. In fact, Scripture tells us later in Revelation chapter 13, verse 1, that the beast will rise out of the sea. The beast comes to power during a time of unrest. He will take the continent down through fear and power and will eventually spread westward. Revelation chapter 17 actually puts this power starting in most likely Europe, Rome specifically, as the focal point of the Antichrist's early works. The prophet Daniel calls his initial power small in chapter 7, as he is described in scripture as a little horn. However, over time through power and fear, he will take over when ten nations are attempting to form a European federation, and he will overthrow three of the members and make himself all-powerful over all ten. Thank you for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. Comment your opinion.